Good morning. It is six o'clock on this Monday, July 3rd. We've got one more day till the 4th of July. We're glad you're waking up with us here on the CBS 42 Morning News. I'm Lillian Lalo. Ani has the day off. Kristen does too. But Dave Nussbaum's holding down the fort with me. And Dave, um, let's first we're going to take a look at the stories making headlines and then we're going to get to you. People in Talladega County cleaning up from the weekend storms where this tree fell. This young officer was just simply doing her job. The plea from local law enforcement to drive safe after an officer was struck over the weekend. Throughout the show, places you can celebrate the 4th all over central Alabama. And our Alley Root has a live report on a 4th of July festival happening in Homewood. Also, entertainment reporter Jimmy Carter joins us with what he calls a firecracker report. <laughs> I'll ask if the new Indiana Jones movie gets a pass or fail. And later, we have a newly named Miss Alabama who won the crown. All right, we're going to get to those stories in a bit. But hey, everyone wants to know what the weather's going to be like. A lot of people probably have outdoor plans, Dave. They're mm -hmm. thinking about fireworks. So break it down for us. Well, many of you off today as well as tomorrow for the holiday. And we are looking at fairly quiet from much of central Alabama at the moment. However, there are a couple storms up there in Coleman County. Right now, those 75 in Birmingham, 73, Tuscaloosa, Summerton at 72 in Anderson. Little sunshine peeking through the clouds, 70 degrees. Now you can see those storms up near Coleman. But the rest of us dealing with some dry weather temperatures are going to be in the 70s, but right over Brushy Pond to Colony area to Good Hope in Hansville. That's the main thunderstorm we are tracking now. You can see here gets to Riverside around 609 Sugar Creek around 614 Bluntsville at 618 as it works its way there off to the east. That's the only storm we have for you at the moment, but we could see a lot more developing. We will see a lot more later today, and there is a risk of some severe weather out there for us. A level one for some damaging winds and hail, so we need to be aware of that and be weather aware today and tomorrow for not only damaging wind and hail threat, but also some heavy rain at times. So most of that is this afternoon with temperatures into the lower 90s. Okay, Dave, thank you. People in Talladega County are cleaning up following those weekend storms. Lay Lake Fire posted some pictures on their Facebook page showing a massive tree that fell across Childersburg Fayetteville Highway at Cosper Bend. It brought down power lines and even hit a car. Everyone inside that car was able to get out and they were not hurt. Then Kayla Reeves sent us these pictures of a tree that fell over Lucy Finn Road on the south side of Childersburg. Continuing coverage out of Pelham, a call to travelers to drive safely after a police officer was injured over the weekend. Police Chief Brent Sugg says that Officer Elizabeth Minter was struck by a driver early Saturday morning. She was providing traffic control at a crash scene involving a drunk driver and it shut down Interstate 65 southbound lanes. Sugg says that a speeding driver ignored the diverted traffic and hit Mentor. This young officer was just simply doing her job. There are plenty of rideshare opportunities to use. Uh, there, there are a number of ways to get home safely. Call a friend, uh, but hold each other accountable. Pelham police say that the driver is in custody and the Alabama law enforcement agency has taken over that investigation. And happening tomorrow, the 4th of July celebrations start all over central Alabama. Our Lady of Sorrows Catholic Church is hosting their annual July 4th festival tomorrow, and that's where you'll find CBS 42's Allie Root this morning. Allie, what can people look forward to? Lillian, it's quiet and calm right now, but tomorrow morning this place will be hustling and bustling with festivities for the whole family. The festival offers a wide variety of fun and games, a chance to win some big money through a raffle, shopping through their trash and treasure rummage sale, and of course, yummy food plates. Festival coordinator Clark Tucker saying about 8,700 pounds of meat is prepared for tomorrow. He says the Boston butts and chicken are fan favorites. Guests can come and go as they please throughout the day. People will come and stay the entire time, but some come for an hour or two hours. And, you know, we'll have children's games uh, for a couple of hours, 10 to 12. So people will come for that and then might get lunch and then go do something else. Or they might wait a little bit and then come. And, uh, you know, some people come and shop in the gym all day. 
And coming up, I'll have more on the church's trash and treasure rummage sale, a longtime staple at their July 4th festival. Want to learn what you could get for a good bargain? Find out in 30 minutes. Live in Homewood, Allie Root, CBS 42 News. Allie, thank you. Covering Vestavia Hills, as people get ready to celebrate the 4th, the fire department says beyond using fireworks safe to, safely and legally, people should make sure they're disposing of their fireworks properly. I think the proper way to dispose of them is to put them in, in water and leave them there for at least 24 hours um, just to make sure they're completely extinguished and, and nothing will go wrong. And firefighters tell us that neighbors can check their city's website for guidelines on what types of fireworks are allowed within city limits. And in news around Alabama, part of a movie set caught fire in Millbrook over the weekend. Jackson Lake Island posted on Facebook that one of their homes from the movie Big Fish burned down after a lightning strike Sunday. These are pictures of what the building looked like before, during, and then after the fire. The island is also home to a lot of goats, and the Facebook post says that all of the goats were safe under the church at the time of that fire. Also around Alabama, it was a close call this weekend for a Fairhope mail carrier there and their cargo. Look at that. Fairhope Volunteer Fire Department posted these pictures after they put out a fire that destroyed a U.S. postal van. And firefighters say no one was hurt and the mail was removed before the fire got out of control. And the cause of that fire is still under investigation this morning. And developing this morning as well, Birmingham police have released the names of the man, or the name of the man that was shot and killed over the weekend. BPD says that they found Lakillo Cummings shot on Republic Boulevard Sunday evening. He died at the scene. Investigators tell us a person of interest was taken in for questioning, and they say an altercation took place in the parking lot of a business, and that led to up to that shooting. A new program is aiming to help treat opioid addiction by bringing treatment options to those in need. It's a pilot program and it utilizes a fleet of custom buses targeted at serving underserved communities to help treat opioid addiction. The CEO of Quality Behavioral Health in Detroit says that those mobile units are exactly what the community needs to help fight the opioid epidemic. A lot of people are losing their lives and killing themselves with over, by overdosing. So this is the time where we want to help, and I'm really happy that I can do something. CDC numbers show that two-thirds of overdoses involve a synthetic blend of opioid and fentanyl. And we're taking a live look this morning at the city of Tuscaloosa. It is official. Former Alabama basketball star Brandon Miller is expected to make his debut as a Hornet tonight. He officially signed with the team over the weekend. Now, terms of the deal were not disclosed. However, as the second overall pick, Miller was expected to sign a four-year deal worth just over $49 million. Miller is eager to start his pro career. His IQ and his playmaking um, and then my ability to, you know, make shots, um, I think that's a, a great duo to have. Um, but, you know, I don't really take pride on offense. I take pride on defense. Miller and the Hornets face the San Antonio Spurs tonight at 7. And it's also time to giddy up. The Birmingham Stallions are the 2023 USFL champions again. The Stallions beat the Pittsburgh Maulers 28 to 12 Saturday in Canton, Ohio. So on Sunday, the city of Birmingham celebrated the Stallions win with a victory parade for the home team. The parade traveled from Protective Stadium to Lynn Park. And Coach Skip Holtz says that the team wouldn't be successful without the fans. To the city of Birmingham, it's been incredible the support we've received. All these people coming out here to the rain uh, it just speaks to what this is all about to the city of Birmingham and what it means to them. And we're glad that we can play a small part of it. Coach Holtz says that the team will now get back to work to try to be three-peat champions. And good news for drivers this morning. Gas prices in Alabama are down. That's according to AAA. So right now gas prices are averaging just at $3.07 a gallon. That's a six cents difference from last week. The national average still remains at $3.53. And in consumer news, Bed Bath & Beyond lives on, sort of. E-commerce website Overstock.com announced that it's going to rebrand 
as Bed Bath & Beyond. It bought the brand's intellectual property last week. It was a $21 million deal. And this doesn't mean that any of the physical stores will stay open. This is just an online thing. Uh, also, <laughs> they're not going to be accepting all of those Bed Bath & Beyond coupons you're probably still finding. Time right now, 610. Birmingham City School students are diving into the film industry. They get hands-on experience and find out what it takes to make a movie. Details on the summer film camp ahead. Also, the Alabama Community College system is growing. Hear from state leaders on expectations for the new school year. Dave. All right, we're looking at Doppler's dog walking forecast this morning. We're starting off the day today pretty quiet, and she says two paws up with uh, temperatures at 75 at 7 a.m., getting to 84 by 11 a.m., but shortly thereafter, but plenty of storms this afternoon, some of them strong to severe, and you need to be weather aware. I'll have more on that coming up. Jimmy. Good morning, Dave. I guess we're going to talk about things that go boom, and there's a couple of different ones, and we're going to tell you about the day that everybody started twisting all the news coming up on the CBS 42 Morning News. Jimmy, we're going to have to talk about your patriotic outfit, too. Looks great. Before we go, though, let's take a look at those drive times. Looking great. We're green across the board. No major accidents or delays. Chelsea to 459, sitting right on target at 12 minutes. Stay with us through this break. You've got more of the CBS 42 Morning News coming up.